we're here at SHOT Show 2016. We're meeting with Lars Daleside with the NRA. What is something that you guys are promoting right now as far as hunter programs? Oh, with the hunter programs, there's a variety of different things, and it sort of depends on the state. But the standard hunting program, you know, my favorite is always the Youth Education Challenge which is basically we're taking kids from all over the United States and they're competing in a variety of hunting related competitions from shotgun to pistol to rifle then there's map reading and then there's uh, uh, identifying wildlife with tracks and skins and different things like that and with that they get a little bit more used to what it is to be outdoors how to handle themselves in these different situations and hopefully become a more responsible hunter in the future. Here at the show you know a lot of people are you know cued into a lot of the politics around uh, gun rights and we're hearing a lot of stuff in the news right now about expanding background checks. What's something that you think is important for people to know about that issue? Well, when it comes to the expansion of background checks, that was the U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics came out and they did a study about where criminals get their firearms and if we're worried about expanding the background checks, they always like to talk about the supposed gun show loophole. Well, according to this year, that U.S. Bureau of Justice, that accounts for 0.7% of all firearms used in crimes. I mean, it is time and again they see that when criminals are getting crimes, they're getting on the black market, they're stealing them, they're having friends and family do the straw purchases, and the cops aren't actually finding that to be a problem, that is the gun shows. What is the problem is that those, when they are breaking the law, they aren't actually being arrested and prosecuted because it might not be as sexy of a case for the prosecutor. Is there any uh, part of, any, any regulation that you think the NRA would support any additional regulation at this time? Yeah, right now there's a bill in the Senate by Senator John Cornyn and a bill in the House by Martha McSally out of Arizona. And it addresses the mental health issue that we're seeing a lot of problems with. There's going to be more funds that are put out there, more encouragements for the states to utilize that and get the uh, most accurate data that we can in the National and Criminal Background Check System. And we're fully behind that bill. It seems like at the show we're seeing a lot of these modular weapons, a lot of the ARs and AXs and stuff. Um, are you seeing a, a rise in those right now? And do you think they, they have a vital role in the shooting sports community? Well, when it comes to definitely, specifically the ARs and the friends that I've talked to that deal with that sort of thing, you know, there's been a big push as of late to have the black rifle hunting. With every generation, whenever they fight a battle, a foreign battle, they often come back and they want to use the firearms that they used in battle. And for the guys in World War I and World War II and Korea, you know, that meant that they're going to be using those wooden stock rifles. That changed a little bit in Vietnam and in Desert Storm and what we have all today. That's why you're seeing more of these rifles used in a more recreational way. It's because the people that use them in battle are now here using them at home. So it's a comfortable thing. It's a reasonable thing, and we think that we're going to see a lot more of the black rifle hunting here in the future. Um, and then as far as the, the lobbying, you know, everyone always hears about how powerful the NRA lobbying is. Um, you were saying earlier that that's not necessarily how much money they spend, uh, but the power of their membership. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, sure, yeah. The example I like to give is based out of Washington. There was a ballot initiative in 2014 where the other sides outspent us 10 to 1. And that was uh, 10 millions to uh, 1 million that we spent. So if the other side is spending 10 million on one ballot initiative in a Western state, you got to think about what sort of money they're spending elsewhere, uh, especially when it comes to supporting candidates and legislators. So that just goes to show what we've been telling people for a long time is that the power is not in the money that we have. It's not in the campaign contributions. The power of the NRA is in the dues paying members and the millions of supporters that we have out there that are engaged politically, that are very active, that will go and knock on doors, that will stuff envelopes, that will send out emails and put people in vans and take them out to the polls on the polling places. These are the people that support us and they vote specifically on this very issue. And that's where the true power of the NRA rests. Uh and just tell me, uh, lastly, you know, your general thoughts on this show. I mean, there's so many people here. You just get the sense of uh, the gun culture in America is alive and well, all kinds of cool weapons. What are, what are some of the things that uh, you're excited about seeing? For me, it's always the people. Uh, dealing with the reporters from all over the, U well, all over the U.S. and then all over the world. 
I'm seeing uh, friends that I make at these different events that work for the variety of different companies. And uh, with that, there's just the opportunity to say hello, to catch up, to find out what they're doing, if there's some way maybe we can work together on something, if not today, then in the near future. Well, that's what I really look forward to. You know, there, there are a uh, number of people that are uh, here that are charged up about the variety of firearms that they get to play with. But, you know, I, I get to shoot enough uh, whenever I really want to or need to. So the, the latest and greatest gun is going to get me moving as much as uh, the people that I get to meet here. All right. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Sure thing. Thank you for having me.